Who's this Taurus? And what's your mind on to earn a death sentence? He's a Templar. Like Rogers and Hornigold. Men cooking up schemes to use the observatory for ill purposes. For power and control. The violence you cause with this thing will be subtle but heavy. Deadly, yet leaving no mark. Does that make sense? Like, if there was a drought and people was thirsty, and one man had a large cask of water but gave a sip to none, he'd be a killer with no blood in his hands. Aye, like that. Fair enough. No, they're here. Deep in the jungle. Soldiers, just there. What should we do? Jesus, look at all this. Corpses for miles. They brought every ounce of menace they had.
¡Seguidlo a él! ¡Y aquí puedo darle!
so strange. What is it? Later, Anne. I'll tell you all when this is finished. Hi. Stand watch here, and let none follow. Fitner that doesn't fight, Sai. Dispiernas! Oh, dispiernas! Venga, muévete! No puedo! Dispiernas! No responde!
Amigo mío, te tengo encañonado.
nos maten a todos! ¡Te castigarán por eso! ¡Parte! ¿Quién me va a castigar? ¿Un hombre muerto? Captain Kenway, ever a splinter in my side. Does this murder fulfill you? I'm only seeing a job done, Torres. As you'd have done with me. As we have done, I think. You have no family anymore, no friends, no future. Your losses are far greater than ours. That may be. But killing you rights a far greater wrong than ever I did. You honestly believe that? You would see all of mankind corralled into a neatly furnished prison, safe and sober, yet dulled beyond reason and sapped of all spirit. So I, with everything I've seen and learned in these last years, I do believe it. You wear your convictions well. They suit you. Torres awakened something fierce. Are we safe? With the device returned, I believe so. What do you call this place? Captain Kenway's Folly! It's a wall to sue to kill her. Can't win it. We will seal this place and discard the key. Until another sage appears, this door will remain locked. There were files when I came here last. Filled with the blood of ancient men, Robert said, but... They're gone now. Then it's up to us to recover them. 
before the Templars catch wind of this. You could join us in that cause. I will, but... Only after I fix what I mangled back home. It arrived last week. my beloved Juno. And for a brief moment, I thought she might occupy this tender body of yours. But something went wrong. And now, she's back out there, adrift. Oh, she was magnificent once. One of a race of beautiful, wonderful creatures. They created your kind. Did you know that? Your people were tools to them. That's all you have ever been. That's all you should ever be. One day soon, I hope. For the world is nearly ready for her return. Wired. Prepared for a second coming. Uh-oh. Here they come. Those Templars. Or maybe assassins this time. Idiots. All of them. Ugh. I envy you. It was her wish that I be here to greet her. It was her experiment that made it possible for my rebirth as one of... these things. Ah! Stay down! Get down on your back! Now! He's got a gun! Guide me into the grave, beloved! I am your instrument! Put the gun down! Drop it! Drop your weapon! Clear! Clear! Check his vitals. He's bleeding fast. Check the victim. Are you okay? Can you hear me? Hello? Talk to me. You alright? Well, there you are. Thank God. I hope you feel well. You look good. Can you stand? Good. Try walking around. A doctor came by, said there wasn't anything to worry about. That the liquid in the syringe was far, far below a lethal dose. I feel terrible about all this. About everything. All our evidence... You, but it was John all along. God, the things we found on his computer. It... Whatever you need, we'll provide. You've done an amazing job. Speaking of which, our trailer is finished. Would you like to see it? I owe you that much. There we go. I uploaded it to your database. You can watch it here or at your Animus. I think you'll love it. It really captures the, the essence of the era. So, take care. And again, thank you. In a world where pirates rule the waves, these men will discover that nothing is sacred and everyone is committed to rum, plunder, and women. Hola, ladies. This summer, Abstergo Entertainment invites you aboard for the adventure of a lifetime. 
so sharpen your cutlasses, shine your hooks, and sail with the Devils of the Caribbean. This virtual experience is not being rated. Timestamp August 16th, 2013. The following audio clips were selected from over 160 hours of real to real tape found in the residence of the late Dr. Warren Vidic following his murder in December 2012. According to labels on the tape's canisters, these recordings were made over a 14 month period between 1980 and 1981 without the consent of their primary subject, Mrs. Eileen Bach. 
a colleague of Dr. Vidic's and the originator of Abstergo's surrogate initiative. Mrs. Bach is now deceased. It should be stated unequivocally that Dr. Vidic made these recordings illegally and of his own volition using wiretaps and hidden microphones. Abstergo Industries had no knowledge of his actions and disavows any responsibility for them. And we're live. Capacitate is at full. Ease the signal in. A little more. You feel anything? Don't be timid. Double it. No, we're taking it easy. 20%. 30. Eileen, go easy. We're six past yesterday. And boost the inputs. Too risky. Not if we split the I.O. signals. 25%. He's up. Oh, okay. There. I see something. I... What is it? Mein Gott. I hear talking. You're... You're okay? Yeah, I hear a stimme. It's... It's German. My name is Miriam Kurz. I see a light. It's cold. Ich werde nichts sagen. There's a man with me. Mehr werde ich nicht sagen. Keep an eye on our fighters. Mein Name ist Miriam Kurz und ich bin eine Navajo. Das Hitlers Zwang, der macht uns klein. Noch liegen wir in Ketten. Doch einmal werden wir wieder frei. Wir werden die Ketten schon brechen. Eileen? Denn unsere Fäuste, die sind hart, ja. Und die Messer sitzen lose. Für die Freiheit der Jugend kämpfe, Navajo. <laughs> Switch off! Powering down! Kämpf, Navajos! Get the out of there! <laughs> Oxygen! Put the valve! No. <coughs> no, Satish, I'm, I'm fine, really. Quit the heroics, just breathe. Better? Yes. Yes, thank you. Did we get something? It'll take a while to pass. What did you see? It wasn't just seeing, it was feeling, being. I was. I was scared. You were shouting in German? I think I was in Germany. I was in Germany, Satish. <laughs> Good morning. Well rested? Exhausted. Yesterday was an incredible find. Seems so. What did it feel like? It's foggy, but I, I relived the memories of a young German woman. Early 20s, I think. A man was interrogating me, looming over me and asking questions. He was shouting, but I was shouting back. And then this, this poem just came out, like a chant. Fascinating. I'm eager for you to hear the tape. Is it ready? Yes, we transliterated the data onto an audio file. It took all night to process the language. Spool it up. Of course. Have a seat. Judging by the subject matter and the setting, I'd say you landed somewhere in Germany in the 1940s, one or two generations back. During the war, I'd imagine. 1940s Germany? <laughs> that would be Miriam Kurtz, my ex-husband's mother. So she's not related to you in any way? God, I hope not. I'd hate to find out my ex-husband is also my brother. <laughs> well, if it was Miriam Kurtz, then we hit a home run. You tapped into someone else's bloodline entirely. <laughs> Should we celebrate? We'll listen first. Surrogate initiative, test session 23, July 29th, 1980. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample, SB1970. It's a little garbled at first. This is you settling into the memory. Your name, say it. My name is Miriam Kurtz. Louder. My name is Miriam Kurtz, and I am never young. Where did you last see the artifact? Who holds it now? I'll say nothing. I've told you all I will. I don't believe that is true. Who has the artifact? Hitler's dictates make us small and are bound in chains. But one day again, we shall walk tall. No binds with us. Restrain. Enough. For hard are our fists, yes, and the knives at our wrists. For you to be free. Now yours lay siege. Lock her away. Now yours lay siege. And that's where we pull you out. Whoa. What would it take to get a visual render of all that? Mm, months, unfortunately. It took 13 hours just to process the audio. Visual takes much longer. But Vidic is able to record audio and visual in real time. How does he do it? His subjects are exploring their own genetic memories. That requires much less processing power. Oh, hold on, sorry. Eileen here. Hello. You have 10 o'clock in Lillian's office. It's 10.13 now. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Tell her I'll be right there, and... Tell her we have some good news. 
No problem. You in trouble? Ugh, the monthly progress report. I'm trying to be honest about our progress, but no matter how much I polish our facts, Warren Vidic swoops in, promising the moon for pennies, and gets ten times the funding for his Animus project. Well, we are using his Animus technology. He's the foundation. We are the skyscraper. Which is why he should be a tech lead, not a project director. <sighs> Good work, Satish. It's incredible footage, really. Clear and vivid. And the subject was synced for a full 62 minutes. Came out speaking French after his last session. Passably fluent. And with full recall of everything he'd gone through. Sorry, sorry I'm late. I was reviewing some data. It's fine. Warren was just telling me about his first subject. Mr... No names. Call him Subject One. Confidentiality. And how about you, Eileen? What's your good news? Well, we did it. We synced with an unembedded memory outside the bloodline. That's a first. Really? Satish was able to process the audio today. A short clip. You can hear it for yourself. Only audio? No real-time memory feeds like Vidic has? Well, that's the difficulty with surrogate genetic memory data. Because I'm viewing memories not embedded in my own DNA, we can't rely on my cognitive faculties to help me process the signal. All we can do is record the raw data and transliterate it later. Hold on. You're running this experiment on yourself? I am. It's going well. I don't like the sound of that. Look, the sample I'm using, the DNA comes from my own son. It's safer this way. Ah, good thinking. 50% of my son's DNA is also mine, which reduces the danger by a huge margin. Meaning, I can now explore the memories of people who aren't directly related to me, on his father's side. But for brief periods of time, I imagine. Right. Just a minute or two, so far. But we're getting there. Come by the lab and listen for yourself. I will, when I have a moment. Unfortunately, work beckons. Ladies. That man is colder than a San Francisco summer. Stay focused, Eileen. You both have important work to do. Obviously. But my work requires his animus technology. I feel a little caged in. That's collaboration, Eileen. It's how science works. I shouldn't have to remind you. I know. I'm just... tired. Stop by and see us today. We have a lot to share. If not today, then this week sometime. Thank you.
didn't hear? What happened?
Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 37, August 9th, 1981. Host, Eileen Bach, DNA sample SB1970. Open! Good morning, Miss Kurtz. You look well, considering the circumstances. Are you rested? Hmm. Have you eaten? Your friends are dead, Miriam. Bartle Schink and all his navigators, his Edelweiss pirates. Executed for five counts of murder. Which has a trial. You must be proud. There was no need. They were scum. All of them. You hear me? All of you are scum. 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 <laughs> I see it so clearly now. They didn't break, did they? You have nothing. Quiet, girl. You don't have the artifact. If you did, you wouldn't be talking to me at all. None of you stay seats. I said no. None of you stay seats. Open your eyes. Can you hear me? I mean, I mean. Power's off. Get the position in here. Step aside, son. I mean, talk to me. Can you open your eyes? Where? Oh, God. No spot. Thank you. 
<clears throat> All right. Notes towards a speech in honor of Dr. Eileen Bach's premature retirement. When I first learned of Dr. Bach's unfortunate accident, I couldn't help but feel a great sense of loss at... No. No, no. Hmm. Uh, Dr. Eileen Bach has and always will be a friend and colleague. When I first learned of her unfortunate accident, I was shocked, of course. To see any friend injured in such a way is deeply upsetting. And to further learn that her injuries were severe enough to force a premature conclusion to her brilliant career, well... I would not wish that fate on anyone. But, if there is any solace to be found in her accident, it may be this, that she was injured in service of her research, in service of work that she cherished most dearly. And it is thanks to her, it is due to her diligence, that some of the mysteries of genetic memory have been further illuminated. And while it is true that work on her project, the surrogate initiative, as she called it, has been temporarily halted, the copious amount of work she has done over the past three years has been incredibly valuable. So while her work has been suspended for the time being, her legacy will most certainly live on. <laughs> February 12, 1981. Qualitative personal interview with Subject 1 on ancestral research regarding Avalon de Grand Prix. How are you feeling? Any side effects? Not really. Aside from the headaches. They've been worse since I started staying in longer. But I don't want to stop. I like her. I want to know what she does next. What's it like? Reliving her memories. So different. The Animus, I mean. The past. At first it was confusing. Distracting. Like New Orleans, the stench. I wasn't expecting all the smells. Smell is the sense most directly linked to memory. When I'm in her memories, it's like I can smell more than I usually can. In general, women have a more acute sense of smell than men do. I had wondered how that would translate. Anything else? Yeah. She's smaller than me, but it's like her body could do more. Did that surprise you? At first, yeah. The ERA people might hate me for this or whatever, but I don't usually think of girls that way. 
climbing things. My mom, my sisters. The animal feeling of Aveline sinking her hidden blade in her throat of... Go on. It doesn't feel... Feminine. What I think of as feminine. But then at the same time, it does. Her center of gravity is way lower. That was a surprise. How easy it is to land. How steady I am on her, her feet. Sorry. This is hard to talk about. No, it's, it's fascinating. This is what we need. Pure experience, in your own words. Okay. Can you tell me about Gerald Blunk? What about him? He and Avalyn were close, but we haven't been able to ascertain if he might be your missing ancestor. Do her memories suggest anything to you? Um... Does this make you uncomfortable? Remember, these are her memories. You're just playing them back. It's not even acting. You're a researcher. Like you say, I haven't experienced her consummating anything. That, that would be... Anyway, I think maybe she was confused. Oh. Well, um, first of all, I don't really know for sure, okay? I mean, guys think about sex more than girls, right? That's a fact. As a researcher, what did you observe? Does it mean she's more like a guy if she thinks about... Is that why she's able to assassinate... Well, okay, here's the thing. I don't know her thoughts, but from what's in her memories, physically, the, the, the fidgeting, some hesitation, what she looked at, who she looked away from, the things she didn't say when I expected her to... If I had to guess what it meant, I would think she was thinking about sex. But I'm a guy, so I would think that, right? So what does it mean for women to act that way? It has to mean something else, right? As a subject, you're able to observe more finely than I am in review. What about unwanted attention from men? Well, I thought that would be the hardest thing to deal with. I'm not into that, for the record. Not at all. Yes, I know. But the way she dealt with it, it happens so often. She, It's like you stop noticing everything she does to avoid it. Crossing the street, eyes in the back of her head. She knew how to handle herself. When she was charming, felt kind of similar to killing. Or the build-up to killing. I... Can we take a break, Mr. Vidic? Of course. Ready to go on? Yes. Avalyn was black. And white. On her father's side. You're sensitive to that? I guess. I mean, I'm white. Aveline looks black, so that's different. But y you get used to it. Like with the girl thing. Until someone makes you not used to it. What do you mean? I don't think I've ever had to think so much about what I'm wearing or how I'm walking. But Aveline, it's like she goes through her whole life in these uniforms... People expect her to behave in a certain way. Definitely. Sometimes I worry I'll slip up and play too relaxed at the warehouse and... I don't know. Blow her cover. You can't blow her cover. I know, I know. I'm just replaying the memories. I can't change them, I know. But, but I, I see it, right? It's a risk. It's... Stressful? Yes. It's best when she goes out as an assassin. On the roofs or in the bayou. I think she was more relaxed that way. Can you imagine? You're only relaxed when you're going to kill someone. Let's stick to memories rather than imagination. What about the slaves? They're kind of just... everywhere. I mean, that, that sounds bad. Slavery is bad. But, but no one's acting like slavery is bad. It's fun when she frees slaves. Is it supposed to be fun? We're not looking for supposed to. Focus on what it is.
So, this will be a short one, Dad. Uh, something to remember me by if things go south. If I don't make it out of the temple today. I've tried to be optimistic about all this, but I, uh, I just can't. I think spending all this time in Connor's memories has made me anxious. I mean, his story is so painful. In so many ways. Still, he never lost hope. Even when his faith and others eroded. I can only believe that what we are doing is the right thing. And that I can stop this disaster. I know this. I mean, the technology is there, waiting for us to use it. I'm the final piece of the puzzle. Something in my genes, or my memories. Some final piece of code to switch the whole thing on. That's why I'm here. That's why they brought me here. Only, uh... I, d I don't know what I'll have to give up in return. My sanity. My life. It's, it's impossible to say. I do know this. Our battle with the Templars will not be over. But whatever's inside that temple is not an ending. It's just another chapter in this... This endless story. And it'll be your job. And Mom's and, and Sean's and Rebecca's. To keep turning the pages. You know, I, I keep thinking about something Orson Welles once said. Something like, if you, if you want a happy ending, it all depends on where you stop telling your story. So maybe... Maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's how people keep marching forward. If something goes wrong and they're dead, something happens to me. When you tell my story years from now, please tell them the one about how I lost my way and then I found it again. Just in time to save the world. And, and just end it there. That'll keep everyone smiling. Goodbye, Dad. Say hello to Mom. Tell her I love her, okay? Tell her I uh, love you both.
remember the first time I did this. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 27, October 21st, 1980. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample, SB1970. Miriam. There is no good reason for you to be here. But your intransigence requires that I detain you until you give me information I can act upon. The location of the artifact, perhaps, or the whereabouts of your leader. Bartle Shing. Just a little something to give Minister Goebel some encouragement that we are on the right track. How about a nice hug? He looks so sad in all his photographs. <laughs> yes, he does, doesn't he? Perhaps you could pay him a visit yourself. He likes beautiful women. Actresses, musicians. Pirates. That's right, pirates. Pirates of the Edelweiss. Isn't that what you kids call yourselves? It's very amusing. And illegal, of course. Breaking Hitler's laws is half the fun. Oh, I imagine so. I imagine you were having a wonderful time just before we captured you on your search of friends. And that's the end of it. Damn it. Why can't we sustain the signal for more than just a few minutes? I need to relax. That's not the issue. This is dangerous work. These memories aren't in your bloodline. That's why it's not holding. There's got to be a solution. Any idea what they mean by the artifact? I've heard it a few times now. Not sure. I don't think Miriam knew either. Not much comes into her mind when she asks about it. But she's protecting the other members of her group, the Edelweiss pirates or something? Yeah. Bartol Schink. Have we looked him up? No, we can. We should. Put your intern on it. <laughs> right. High priority. Yeah. <sighs> this isn't getting any easier. Jesus. Hi, Seamus. It's Mom. Hey. How are you? Dad! It's Mom! <sighs> Hello, Eileen. Hi, Carl. How's Seamus? Great. We were out shopping for school clothes. Yeah. The summer just sped by. They all do. I never seem to notice. No windows in the office. Right. Trapped in the lab. So, did you need to talk? Yes, sorry. I was curious about your mother, actually. Oh. Okay. 
much did she talk about the war when you were growing up? Not often. Bits and pieces. Why? I was doing some research last week about World War II, and something came up about the Edelweiss pirates, or the Navajos, and your mother's name popped up. Really? That's an odd coincidence. Does that... Does any of that ring a bell? Yeah. Mom ran with that group while the war was on. There were a group of kids who wanted to avoid the Hitler Youth programs, but in later years they escalated their activities to, uh... bigger ideas like vandalism and sabotage. But why Navajos and pirates? Just some of the names they used. Navajos, Edelweiss pirates, you know, kids. There were little pins, little white flowers. I may still have hers. That's interesting. And this is for work... Researching my mother? Not exactly, but... Sorry, I can't talk about it. Right. You never could. Hey, don't. I didn't mean to be flippant. No. Don't mind me. All for the greater good. I like to think so. Ah! Ah! down. You all right? Damn it! Five months of this bullshit! We're floundering. Take it easy, Eileen. You're just stressed. I am not stressed. I'm frustrated. I'd like to go again this afternoon. No. There is no reason to rush this. We're hardly rushing. We're running into the same wall over and over again. Why can't we push through? Why can't you keep me in the Animus longer than two minutes? Because surrogate genetic memory data is fragile. The EEG is exploding and your brain is doing too much work. The longer you stay in, the more damage it does. It's even possible that... Possible that... It's possible the memories we're digging into could eventually overwrite your own. Like information on a tape drive. There's just not enough space in your head to do both. Here I come to save the day! (laughs) Good afternoon, all. Did you invite him? No, but you did. Remember? That was months ago, Warren. What do you need? I wanted to stop by. Check on your progress. Well, apparently it's still too dangerous to keep me under for more than a few minutes. Hmm. I always suspected that would be your biggest hurdle. The genetic memory sequencing is the easy part, if time-consuming. But the replay, that's something else. Yes? Let's think this through. My subjects are diving into their own genetic memories, so the information is already encoded in their heads. Which means the animus has less work to do. Less computing, less parsing. Right. So to get your surrogate data working, to let people experience foreign memories, it'll take a hell of a lot more processing power than anyone has. Even Abstergo Industries. Ideally, we'd like to build an external processor that mirrors as many brain functions as possible. Something to handle the calculations. But the cost and upkeep of that would be... Astronomical. Let me see what I can do. I have some sway with Lillian. We won't build Rome in a day. But if we focus on the pretty buildings first, maybe we'll achieve something. Thank you, Warren. Till next, folks. Gentlemen, how do you find it here? It will work for us. But our goal must be to scatter our operations. To live and work among the people we protect, just as Altairi Ben Lahad once counseled. Well, until that time, it's yours as you see fit. Edward, Captain Woods Roger survived his wounds. 
He has since returned to England, shamed and in great debt, but no less a threat. I will finish that job when I return. You have my word. Evening, Anne. Edward? I'll be sailing for London in the next few months. I'd be a hopeful man if you were beside me. <laughs> England's the wrong way around the globe for an Irish woman. Will you stay with the assassins? No, I haven't got that kind of conviction in my heart. You? In time, I. Now my mind is saddled and my blood is cooled. Sail ho! Coming into the cove! <laughs> You're a good man, Edward. And if you learn to keep settled in one place for more than a week, you'll make a fine father too. Did you always know how to sail a boat? The Jackdaw is a ship, Jenny. Not a boat. But did you always know? No. No, I learned after leaving Bristol. After you left Mother? Well, I didn't leave your... I didn't leave without saying goodbye, that is. It was an arrangement, you see, between your mother and me. She said you left her. She said you always talked about sailing a boat and making money in the new world. I did always want to sail a ship. That's true. But not for a lot. To support us. To take care of her. And you. Not me. Mother said you didn't know about me. She said you worked only once a year and that she never knew where to find you. That's all true and I'm sorry for that. If I'd known earlier, I might have come home. 
I hope that I would have. Well, you were busy. That's what I think. I was, but... That wouldn't have mattered. Can I steal your boat? Boat? I see no boat here. Do you? Oh, I mean ship, obviously. I don't see the difference anyway. Ah, it's a very simple one, Jenny. A ship can carry a boat, but a boat cannot carry a ship. Why then, everything is a ship. Large and small. But for my toy boat, the one I take into the bath with me. <laughs> That's a clever way of seeing it. Is it hard to talk about Caroline, Jenny? About your mother? She passed some years ago. I miss her, but it's all right. Was she in pain? I don't know. I don't think so. She was very happy for quite some time. Then, not so happy. I didn't see her much after that. Then, she was gone. I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. It's all right. You're here now. And we're on an adventure. Uh, only a little one, I hope. I can't handle too many more surprises. You think we'll see a whale? Yes, there's a very good chance. Hmm. And what about pirates? Will I see pirates? No. Not much chance of that, I think. Oh, that's rather sad. I should have liked to have seen one. Tell you what, Jenny. As soon as these winds die a little, I'll let you steer the jackdaw. One little trick at the helm before sundown. Yay! <laughs> Miss Jennifer Kenway, may I introduce myself? Jennifer Scott, if you please. I'm sorry, I... I... Uh... My daughter was raised by her mother, Caroline, until she passed away some years ago. Jenny prefers to use her surname to mine. Ah, please forgive my ignorance. I will. She may not. Father, help me. This little rascal, however, is a Kenway. What's wrong, Haven? I can't see the stage. Up we go. How's that? Fine. But won't your arms tire? Hey, I'm not so old as that. But if they do, then we shall quit this posh gig and go and meet your mother for some chocolate and whites. How's that sound? Yes, please. Okay, hush now. 